Alright guys, we're live. Um step out the way. Work through some uh technical difficulties. But my guest today is uh, Ernest Fargo. He's a uh, 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 researcher from uh, Michigan. So Ernest, what got you started on the subject of Bigfoot? Well, it's actually a sighting. Uh, I was driving home from deer hunting in 1991 in November. Uh, it was November 17th, 1991. And I uh, had a sighting there, and that's what got me into it, I guess. And uh, before that, I really hadn't thought about it. Definitely didn't think there was anything like that in Michigan. And really hadn't heard any stories about Michigan at that point. And uh, so I guess that's what got me into it, the, the curiosity from that point, wondering what I saw. And I guess I knew what I saw, but I couldn't believe what I did see. But I had seen. Uh, so that was my introduction to uh, the Bigfoot world, I guess. Okay, so I knew then it was a Sasquatch, like you do. Yeah, what I saw was pretty clear. Uh, so I was right, driving. Well, go ahead. Take us through it. Okay, yeah. So I had been hunting. I hunted a few days uh, up at a cabin that we have near Atlanta, Michigan. And driving home, I left. And I left my uncle and my father there. They continued hunting. They stayed there all season that year. And But I had to go back. I had school and work to deal with. So I... Uh, I left, so I started driving home. I was probably, I don't know, I'd been driving for a little while uh, down a road called M33. It's kind of on the uh, northeastern side of the Lower Pen Peninsula and uh, northern Michigan, northern Lower Michigan. And uh, I had to use the bathroom. And there was really nothing around, so I uh, pulled on down a little dirt road off M33, drove down just a little ways and jumped out of the car. Uh, right about that time, it was just getting dark. It was uh, just, I mean, it was actually pretty dark. I had my headlights on and everything else. I jumped out of the car and just did my thing right in the middle of the road and just a little dirt road, almost like logging road. And, um, as I'm standing there doing my thing, I hear this scream at the top of the hill in front of me. In front of me, there was a hill. The road, you know, went straight and went up the hill. And what I actually saw, I hear the scream, and it took my attention up to the top of the hill. And what I saw was uh, basically the silhouette of the trees and the road, and uh, looked like a person standing on the left side of the road at the top of the hill. And uh, it was right at that point where I, it was facing west. I was facing west, so the sky was just a little bit lighter in the west, western sky there, and it was like completely pitch black behind me. Uh, but you know, I saw what looked like a person, and I just assumed was a hunter, stand on the top of the hood, uh, hill and just maybe walk out of the woods after they got done hunting, waiting for a ride or something right on the side of the road. But the scream was enough to kind of freak me out and give me the chills, so I uh, finished up as quick as possible and jumped back in my car to the safety of my car, where I felt a little bit better. Started up, started driving up the road, up the hill, and uh, started getting closer, and this thing walked directly right in front of my headlights and from one side of the road to the other and walked right into the, the forest on the other side. And I... Wow. As it went into the woods with my headlights on it, I was probably got within probably 30 yards of it as it gone went into the trees. You know, so it was a pretty, you know, a pretty good sighting, man. It was pretty close, and that was, so yeah. it was, it was 1991, so that was you know 28 years ago or something, and uh, almost 29 years this year. So. Yeah, I was young. I had perfect eyesight. I still don't wear glasses. My eyes are still good enough to get around and read and do what I need to do without glasses, although I could use them for reading. Uh, my, my eyes were perfect. Uh, 
you know, I saw what I saw. It was pretty realistic. I've often thought, you know, since then I try to play it through my head. Man, it was so realistic. I have a hard time believing that I could have been hoaxed at that distance. You know, and it was just very realistic. It was animal-like. I think I even put that in a report. I did report this to the BFRO back then. Uh, well, it was several years later. Actually, in 1991, the BFRO didn't even exist at that point. I don't think they were established till about uh, 1995 or so. Uh, yeah. But it was shortly after, and really the internet wasn't around, and there was we were still working off like 56k modems and stuff over the phone lines at that point. Real slow access to the internet. Yeah. But uh, eventually. On the internet, I did find the BFRO probably in the late 90s at some point, maybe 1998, somewhere in there. Sounds about yeah. right. Uh, eventually, I started reading reports in there. Eventually, I just, uh, you know, actually, I don't even think there was, at, at, at that point, I don't even think there was a database that was online yet. They were just asking for reports, I believe, at that point. I think so, there was a couple of forums stuff it was just starting out yeah so I, I i actually had a place to report a sighting so i did i reported it on there and then uh, later on sometime i was contacted by a a bfro researcher and i've looked for him i don't think he's around anymore his name is casey charms or challenge uh was the name of the guy he was a nice guy uh talked to him several times and we had plans and to get, get together, but never did. Kind of lost touch with the guy at some point. Uh, haven't heard anything from him in years, and I don't know where he's at anymore. But it did get put in the BFRO database. Um, still there today. You know, I think I reported in like the late '90s, maybe 2000, somewhere in there. Uh, so about 20 years ago, I think I made that report. So. So, um, that, was, that was my first real thing that got me into is that, that, that actual sighting. I was just so confused right. and curious about it. I had to learn everything I could about it. You know, and back then I, bought, I found a book, uh, John Green's Apes Among Us, a great book. You know, I think one of the is. best ones out there is still. Uh, I agree. But then I just started reading books and I have quite a library now. I've read quite a few books. Oh, uh, I love the stories. I love the, it's interesting. Plus, you know, trying to find answers for what I saw that night or that day or exactly. evening. Well, uh, w let's go, uh, what did it sound like? What was the, um, the, uh, uh, or, uh, the scream it made? What it sound like you, if you could imitate it? It was, I, it probably lasted a duration of about, two to four seconds I would guess and I remember it starting off low going up to a real high pitch and then ramping back down uh, probably duration of two to four seconds or so and it's bone chilling it was a uh, like nothing I've ever heard it was and you know interesting thing to me even looking back at it is my attention was directed straight up to the top of the hill where I saw what looked like somebody standing there on the top of the hill, the silhouette there. I could see up against the backlit sky or, you know, like the lighter sky. So again, I could see the silhouette of the forest on both sides. I could see the silhouette of the, the top of the road, the top of the hill and what looked like a person at that point, I assumed was a hunter, but that scream, you know, was it, I'm in, you know, in the middle of the forest on this little road, and I jumped in my car, you know, pretty much as quickly as I could. It, it, it did, you know, scare me a little bit, or at least made me a little uncomfortable for sure. Yeah, it spooked you for sure, yeah. You know, it was a distance where, you know, at that point, it was probably more than 100 yards away. So, you know, probably. I mean, that's close. Yeah, 100, 150 yards away, but this was, you know, pretty much at dark. And the only reason I even saw this thing originally was because of the lighter sky. I could see its silhouette. I really couldn't make out any details at all at that point. And again, I assumed it was a hunter until my headlight took this thing. And, and I tell you what, it, 
didn't walk like a person and it wasn't a giant like uh something here about eight or ten foot tall 12 foot tall nothing like that it was you know maybe six to seven foot tall it was quick it was animal like movements is my best way i could describe it you know and it was convincing enough to me that man i just have a hard time believing that somebody could pull off a hoax at that distance to fool me but i guess it's entirely possible maybe it was hoaxed you know after researching yeah. in that area different there was a rash of sightings that happened around that area around that time the year before especially you know there's write-ups in the paper about it so i guess i'm always still open to the possibility that maybe i was hoaxed you know and then after i saw this thing it took a, a little a little bit to register i'm still driving the thing i watch it go into the woods on the other side and i guess it i didn't know what i saw then I kind of got freaked out and had to turn around. I had to go past that spot. So I went down the road, turned around, and I had to get back to the main road. And when I went past that spot, um, I, I was probably doing 60 miles an hour or 65 miles an hour down this little log in and I was just, you know, so I was just, I guess yeah. I didn't get out. comfortable. I didn't, I didn't know what to think of it. I took it by surprise. It's something I wasn't expecting to see or experience that evening. And, but looking back, it's one of my biggest regrets of not actually uh, looking for footprints and be able to cast something that probably would have been castable at that point. Less, at least been able to see, and it was a dirt road, you know, and it's um, it would have made marks in this right. road. I, so I'm <clears throat> upset myself for leaving the scene and jumping back on the road and taking off at that point, you know. But well, I think uh, I think it happened so, so fast. fast that you're not, you're not thinking about it and you know you're just uh in the moment you, you at that moment you don't know what it is you see you know you know it's it's bigfoot but it's like a world shifting moment of uh you seeing kill you know so let me tell you what i did see something that day oh uh, for sure and i, I, I would yeah. gladly take a polygraph for anybody who'd like to see it i would certainly pass it you know i buy it and but, you know, I can't prove whether it was a hoax or not a hoax. But all I'm going to well, say, if it was a hoax, it was a really, really, really convincing one. I mean, like I said, my right. eyesight was really good back then and still, you know, pretty good for my age. I'm older well, and, and, and the odds of that, of, you know, waiting out there for until a car comes for hours, just, just, just to run in front of the car when like, a, guy, you know, a person wouldn't know if that car is going to stop the guy's gonna come out and shoot him you know because people some people want to shoot a bigfoot so it's kind of and i think there's been a few people injured over the years i'm trying to hoax people and people shoot at them or whatever well you have to remember too this was you know uh michigan whitetail firearm season at that point it was like the third day of firearm season November right 17th. exactly and, you know there's yeah a lot of a lot of hunters running around in the woods, you know, uh, and it'd be a pretty brave thing to do. And it's uh, to do, uh, you know, at that time, right at dark, close to dark, and to run yeah. around. Woods too, you know, and it'd be a pretty, yeah, you know, foolish, just, very foolish thing to do. Uh, all yeah, right. So what, about, so what'd you do after that? What got you started? I started reading books and stuff, getting into it, and then what? you uh start going out in the field i guess then into uh any other things you had well i kind of quietly did that you know i did tell some people originally back then uh, this is a long time ago that's long before the bigfoot tv shows and stuff and back back then it was hard to even find a book on the subject there wasn't that many books out at that point you know not like there is today there's hundreds and hundreds of bigfoot books now but back yeah, then it's kind of a was, subject and internet was still new, and so what I, I, I believe that there was something out there, so I started going back to that same area and hiking around. That's where it started, just hiking around that particular area, and as, you know, a lot of national forest land and everything all around there, and trying to look at maps and go down to, like, swamps and try to find tracks, and, you know, I never really did find anything else in that area that was substantial. You know, but then I think in 2001 and 2003, I did find uh, 
tracks in two different spots if you're in Michigan. And then, but both times they weren't defined enough to really cast. And, you know, it had water in them. And I guess it could have been somebody's boots, but just seemed unlike, unlikely at the time that there'd be somebody back into these areas that I was back into. I guess it's possible, but, you know, I have, you know, twice that I found tracks. But actually one more time in like 2016 or 2017 found a trackway of eight tracks. But again, it was after rain and it sure looked like there's toes there and videotaped them and took pictures and everything else. But, you know, you can see where sand had started to run back into the track. And it was like they are made during this rainstorm we had the night before. So we had a rainstorm the night before. So I had like three different times of finding tracks, uh, but I have been looking. I mean, I, I'm a hunter first. I hunt everything, you know, so I take advantage of, you know, the small game, you know, the deer, you know, season, the bird yeah. season. Uh, so I'm out there a lot anyways. And also, you know, just scouting, especially for deer and setting up lines and things like that. So I've always been on the lookout, hoping for something else. Uh, but really haven't found much. Again, the tracks, they were look good, and it seemed unlikely they would be where I found these tracks. One time in the middle of February, and a, it was about a mile and a half, two miles back, and there was about two and a half foot of snow. I got into the cedar swamp, and I'd actually gone back there to – do wildlife photography because there's so much new snow and it had a lot of pines and it's just a you know beautiful setting so I was taking pictures and it was really tough I used snow shoes to get back there down in the swamp and there was a lot less snow in the swamp and uh found a spot where uh something walked through this muddy little spot and there were I think about about five tracks and I took some great pictures of those it was 35 millimeter back then uh before digital cameras but yeah. uh Again, not definitive enough and old, and they were filled with water. But it seemed like, uh, you know, really strange or unlikely that there'd be anybody that far back. And it is that was private property. So to get back, I mean, you have to, it was gated private property. So it's no way to really get on it unless you know somebody, you know, there. So, right. Uh, there was nobody out there, nobody that was allowed to be there. So if there was anybody that had been there to make those traps, they would have, they would have been trespassing. So that's one of the track deals. But again, none of that's been definitive enough to uh, prove anything one way or the other. But I have had some other experiences over the years. Uh, I was hunting with a, a friend of mine that I, we were hunting around Atlanta, Michigan. And we'd split up. We went to two different spots. Uh, I was, we're about two miles away from each other. We both had our own trucks there. So we planned on hunting until dark and then meeting up after dark and going to town and getting a bite to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, so I go to meet up with him after dark on the side of the road. I see his truck, pull up behind it, and he jumps into my truck real quick and tells me the story. And... His story was he was hunting up in a tree stand and and I I know the area so I can explain it. There's a bunch of ravines that kind of run parallel next to each other, parallel to each other, and um, he was on a tree stand at the top of one of these ridges that and had you know parallel ridges behind him and in front of him. <clears throat> so his story is he was sitting there and just before dark had turned around behind him looked at the ridge, scanning the ridge behind him, and saw something black duck down behind the ridge. And he watched there for a while, nothing, and a few minutes later, looked around the other way and his other shoulder and saw the same thing again, something ducked down behind the ridge. And I guess it happened a few times before dark, and it's kind of freaking him out because there are black bears there. And right now, I, his thought was probably that a black bear is stalking him for some reason or something. But uh, so he waits till dark and gets down after dark and he watched this thing or whatever, saw this thing a few times before dark. Gets down, he's kind of nervous at that point and wanting to get out of there uh, as quick as possible. 
He's got a self climbing tree stand at that point. I don't know. So he gets out of the tree. He's got about eighth of a mile walk, maybe, to get back to this little four wheeler trail. And then probably another quarter or three eighths of a mile to get back to the road down this four wheeler trail. Well, he says that something black followed him down this little four wheeler trail just off the trail and getting behind trees and followed him all the way back to the road. And he's telling me the story, and it's, and it's pretty convincing. He's shaking, you know, he's shaking. There's tears running down his face. I mean, he was seriously shook up. He seemed pretty believable at the time, and he's somebody I'd known for years, and I don't believe him to make up something like this. And he's just completely believable. So uh, I'm like, okay, let's, let's go into town, grab a beer and some food, and we'll uh, you know, settle down a little bit. So we decided to park my truck and drive his truck into town. Well, his truck was basically parked right on the road, right where this trail ends, right where he said this thing had stalked him up back up to the road. He said it stalked him all the way back to the road. And that was his word, stalked. He said it several times. And uh, so we, this kind of gives his story maybe a little bit of credibility. Uh, we parked my truck on the side of the road, kind of right there, and walked over to his truck, jumped in there. As we get close to his truck, I heard this, just right where this trail ends, just into the woods, maybe 20 feet or so, and it's completely dark at this point. I heard what sounded like a child, a young child, a young girl, maybe six, eight, 10 years old or something, giggling just into the woods. You know, so it's the weirdest, strangest thing, creepy, whatever you want to say. I. I don't know what it was. I've never heard a bird do that before. I've never heard anything like it in the woods. It sounded like my daughter at that point in life. She was about that age. It sounded like my daughter was there in the woods, but she was, you know, three hours away. Uh, it sounded sound like a young, girl, a young girl giggling in the woods. And we jumped in his truck. And I have to say, you know, whatever he saw, I don't know what it was. He never got a good enough look at it. Call it a Bigfoot or anything else. Just called it black and it kept getting behind trees and hiding behind trees and stalked them all the way back up the road but I heard what I heard I didn't see anything I can only really tell his story at this point and tell you what I heard what I heard was strange it was right at that trails end right where yeah. something would have been if it would have followed him back to the road hey, you know. interesting story that was in you know Michigan here another Michigan one yeah. I do have a couple other instances uh, with other people that happened one time, actually twice in the same location, uh, to a year apart. So, and this was an old abandoned sand pit. So it was all sandy and it had been abandoned probably 25 years at that point. Uh, but they mined all most of the sand out of there and dug two big lakes. So what it was, it was just kind of a place that we could sneak back into as private property owned by a, the people that originally mined it, a corporation. Uh, it's fenced in, but there was breaks in the fence and people would go back there and party and hang out and fish or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> At that point, there was an old office trailer that they had there that was shot up and all the windows were busted out of it and been there for 25 years of band and stuff. But at some point we swept it all out and I'd use it kind of like to camp, you know, at least, it, you know, if it rained, you'd keep the, you know, the rain right. off. Shelter. It was a good shelter. Yeah. And it was right next to the lake and, you know, beautiful sand lake, just gorgeous, you know, great fishing. Uh, there was two lakes right there. They weren't connected. Uh, but there was six of us there. We had a campfire, and this is probably, I think it was just about midnight or so. Uh, we had fished, all, you know, in the evening and stuff and cooked out and did whatever and drinking a little and around this bonfire. And all of a sudden, a rock comes flying, like, in between us and bounced right over the fire. And everybody just kind of looked at each other and didn't know what to think, you know. And... Uh, just a minute later, or seconds later, maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds or a minute later, it happened again. This time, the rock bounced before the fire and then hit the fire 
and kind of scattered the fire a little bit. And wow. one of my friends there uh, started yelling in the darkness, uh, some obscenities, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I don't recall exactly what he yelled. He yelled something. But right after his little yelling rant, we got a scream, you know, and it seemed like it was just just into the darkness, 30, 40 yards maybe, just out of sight where you couldn't see. Close. And Very close. A, a, a screech, scream thing. And again, I, I don't know. I can't prove anything. We didn't see anything. But we all, all of us jumped in this trailer and got back to the back corner of that thing and kind of mm -hmm. huddled there and talked, trying to figure out what was that, what was it, you know, and a kind of a freaky story, freaky situation. Nothing ever happened. We sat there and listened and didn't hear anything more, and it was quiet the rest of the night. Nothing after that. Well, it sounds like Sasquatch, you know, rock throwing and uh, that sc you know, scream or whatever. Uh, I was I heard, heard your buddy scream. And I'm like, yeah, well, this is my place. Well, that same exact spot, well, probably about 100 yards from that spot around the just a little cove of that little lake there. Uh, one year later, I was back there with uh, another friend of mine that wasn't there the first time. And it had been one of the hottest days in the summertime. And uh, I remember him saying, well, this, you know, it's too hot. Well, we wait till dark, go out there, you know, when it, you know, at dark and fish, fish at night. Right. So he came over and grabbed me, picked me up, and we went over, out there and, uh, I think we got out there probably right around dark, probably close to 10 o'clock, and uh, walked. You got to hike, I don't know, probably a mile or so to get back, you know, to this, this, these lakes. And uh, we get back, we're fishing. I think it's at about the same time, probably 12 or 12.30. Uh, been fishing there a couple hours, and uh, we get, uh, first of all, I, I can't say to this day, it sounded like a fish jump, but it could have been a rock over the water. And then just a few seconds after that, I heard uh, that same scream, screech, scream again. So this is two times, two years apart. I actually got with that guy. He's actually my Facebook friend of mine right now. We just got back in touch and recently he phoned me on Facebook and uh, we talked to each other exchange phone numbers, I called them and uh, asked them, well, do you remember that? You know, not, uh, do you remember us fishing and hearing something down there? And he, he remembered exactly and described it perfectly. I mean, remembered everything I remember about that same night. That was, you know, like, you know years and years ago. But uh, right. it's kind of cool to have a little somebody else out there that uh, heard that. And of course, the six people that, the five other people that were with the first time heard it. Uh, but unfortunately, I think like two of the five people are no longer here. They passed away now. But there's there's some something screaming, you know. Like again, didn't see anything, didn't see what did it. But it was certainly similar to what I heard, you know, in northern Michigan and uh, yeah, uh, with uh, where I actually saw what I saw. So it's definitely a similar scream, screech thing going well, on. It sounds like, you know, it's Sasquatch activity, you know, the screams, uh, rock throwing for sure. The rock throwing thing is, is either human or something that could throw rocks, you know? So it's really strange. Uh, I'm not willing to close everyone with Bigfoot. I just don't know. It could have been a person, somebody. There was other people that could go back there. So I guess there's other people that could have screamed or... But it really didn't sound human. I tell you what, neither time, any yeah. one of these things, it did not sound human. Right. Do so you think a human, a human trying to fake it, fake, you know, go to scream, do you think that would really make you scared to retreat into the shelter, you know? Because these things, when they make a scream, you know, they're in a different wavelength. And, you know, you feel it. People feel <laughs> it's scared. I don't think well, we can... What's interesting about that same area also, uh, those same two lakes there, um, uh, there was several years ago, and not even several years ago, probably 
uh, I'm kind of, I've got cameras set up in that area and some private properties around that area. Uh, so I've got, I know some people that own property there that, so I can get into that area still. And uh, I do have some cameras going, uh, but one of these people actually heard this scream just, I mean, about four years ago, the same scream in the middle of the night, middle of the summertime, one of the you know, hot days in the summer. Uh, yeah. And heard this scream again and described it to me. Well, now I'm I'm, I'm looking for Bigfoot now, but uh, but yeah. it was interesting. This woman didn't really know anything about Bigfoot and didn't think anything of it. She thought that somebody might be getting murdered or raped out there, and thought somebody was getting killed out there. And she actually called the local police department and had the police come out, and they showed up, and I guess she told them the area where the scream was coming from and but they didn't investigate it any further they didn't go back there so they took a report but they didn't hear any screams and they didn't go back into the area that she told them that the screams were coming from so kind of interesting so there's a history of screams in that area in fact uh there's other reports i think there's actually a bfr role, role report right in that area again from years ago that uh describes the same thing screams so there's, and I heard somebody else talk about a track phone near there, but I haven't actually seen the track or been in touch with the person that casted this track. But I heard there was a track casted somewhere right in that area, but I haven't mailed the track phone to people, that whoever has the, the cast at this point. Right. It's kind of hard to do that. You know, it's a lot of research and work just doing that, you know, tracking people down, especially the older, older reports. Um, so, uh, um, do you have any more encounters that happen? Um, but, like, my only, I guess, thing was just the sighting issue. That's, right. what, I guess, my belief in Bigfoot, or at least a strong possibility in my mind at this point that there's something out there that is an unclassified primate. I have... I in my own, I, I still give a slight possibility that I could have been hoaxed. Uh, and the other things, the rock growing thing, I guess could have been a person. You know, I didn't see anything through this or anything. The giggle, the right. giggling, it could have been a bird. I don't know. I don't know what it was. But I can totally just tell you what I heard and how I describe it. I've never heard it. Like right. It. So I really only had the one encounter. I really haven't seen any. Great, great evidence in Michigan that uh, is outstanding at this point. You know, I think there's some really great stories and some great encounter stories, some great seemingly credible witnesses. You know, and there's others that don't seem as credible. Uh, some, but I think there is something out there. You know, and I waste a lot of time, a lot of my time, a lot of my personal time, a lot of my money traveling around and chasing down these stories. Um, eight. I'd like to think there's something I've not wasted my time. I hope to think I'm not wasting my time. Uh, but even if I'm wasting my time, time, it's not yeah. really a waste. It's not really wasted time. No, it's not no, really it's not. going out and getting in the wilderness and the woods and uh, seeing things. And, you know, oftentimes isolation, especially the by yourself, you learn a lot about yourself. That's you know, true. and I can use therapy in a lot of ways. You know, that's I hunt, and I guess mostly these days I use hunting as my therapy. Of, you know, to yes. escape all the demands of everyday life. You know, the same way, I know exactly how that feels. Uh, and to meet new people. Uh, <clears throat> um, you know, doing this it is a lot of time. A lot of people, you know, we devote a lot of time in the subject, and it's real for sure. I mean, I've had encounters, and I don't think anyone would hoax you if you if you just look at the common the common sense of it. That you know, okay, a hunter's out there. He's not gonna scream at you, walk in front of your car, and you know, uh, at the lake, someone's phone that you. Um, if you hear a scream from a person, you know. I don't think it gives that shock to your body like a Bigfoot scream, but 
you know, where you feel it and it makes your senses and your instinct go into flight or flight mode. I don't think humans can, you know, get you to that point. Um, so, and I, they're out there, you know. I think we're going to find a lot of good evidence this year, the next coming years, actually, in Michigan. There's a lot of good uh, people out there like yourself. They are actively trying to uh, get really good scientific um, evidence that we can um, show to the uh, scientific community. You know, I do um, have, you know, at this point, 20 cameras going full time running on video. Wow. They're all you know, high, you know, high quality newer cameras. I've ditched and got rid of all my old ones. And I still have. So I still have. I guess I, I have, you know, the old trail cams that are 35 millimeters still, but I don't use those anymore. I've upgraded, but I've got 20 good, you know, high quality ones at this point running. I run full time on video now because still pictures, you know, there's, it's hard to tell. I, I, I hate even seeing still pictures on trail cams posted any place on Facebook or anything like that. It seems useless. Why not do video so you know what this thing is instead of this blotch of fur or whatever. Uh, so I, with that. I run video and I, I don't have a Sasquatch yet. Uh, I have lots of cool wildlife stuff, though. That's you know, got too, bear, you know, bear, deer, you know, owl, uh, all you know, all kinds of little critters, you know, porcupines, you know, raccoons, and all that. I've got some iffy, questionable stuff that I just don't know what it is. Uh, but definitely no Sasquatch yet. But even thinking about that, I, I think about my twenty little cameras. And that's still just a, you know, a drop in the bucket. It's just like monitoring such a small area. You know, you kind of get like a little yeah. shape of one little area you're watching. And, you know, if they get beyond, you know, you know, 60 yards or so, it doesn't even pick them up, you know, so they can walk on by. So it's got to it's got right, go from right. the camera. And again, people say that they don't walk in front of cameras. They can hear them or whatever. You know, that's, that's untrue. Mine are actually no glow cameras, so there is no light see or anything like that and also there's nothing that happens until you trigger the camera so once you trigger the camera you're caught on camera so there's no way that they can sense anything that's happening because you no know, i mean they're highly efficient cameras you know there's no nothing going on with these things I, until guess, you trigger them. I, I guess my only thing is um from my experience i'm sure you've experienced is uh deer normal animals they they can not the camera by looking at it and they know whether it's the shape or whatever it belong there. I'm sure you have uh, pictures of, you know, of the animals looking at the camera, right? Oh yeah, certainly. You know, they, they, they see the cameras. I, I hide them. Yeah. I, I've tried all different methods and even baiting with stuff, and, you know, salmon and bacon and, you know, <laughs> I'm sure that, and that, I'm sure that worked on all the animals besides that spot. Unfortunately, I, right. Yeah, you know, and I know that a bear can actually smell the camera, the plastic in the camera. So oh, yeah. The animals do, yeah. So that it could smell and stay away from something like that. But, you know, what's interesting also, I also hunt. So this is, it, it keeps track of the wilderness and what's going on. And it, it yeah. you know, oftentimes gives me, you know, good indication of what might be good hunting areas also. And it's great, the wildlife, you know, just getting different video of different wildlife and just knowing what's going on in the woods, what wildlife is out there um, in that area, in those areas. And, yep. of course, I move cameras around and stuff. Uh, but they learn, they learn a lot of the observation that they provide. I have got some weird stuff on the cameras. I'm not a woo guy at all, you know, and I'm not a paranormal guy at all. Or Well, uh, let's go into some of that uh, on the cameras. I do have some weird stuff that I've caught on cameras uh, that I don't know how to explain that like one time light in the sky, it, it, this is really remote areas. There's no light. There's no way to even get close to these areas where I've got most of my cameras, especially, you know, where this one was in one particular, a couple videos that happened in the same night. So I'll kind of explain. So I ended up with this bright light that seemed to be up in trees, seemed to be, you know, 30 foot up in a tree or something. Uh, that activated and that the camera. It activated the camera somehow, and uh, uh, which was strange. You know, there was nothing else yeah. there other than this light that activated the camera for some reason. There's nothing around for there definitely not to be up in a tree. 
I, I'm not saying it's orb or what it was. I don't know what it was. So it triggers it. And it was the middle of winter time. And uh, of course, it's got the time stamp on there. And it's got even temperature. You know, I can't remember. It was like, yeah, I mean, it's kind of awesome. or something. maybe even negative digits at that point. It was really cold, really cold night in the middle of the winter. And so I think that that happened. This light show, showed up. I think it had um, 10 or 15 second video clips or video at that point. So I got like 10 seconds of this light up in the tree, which was odd, strange. There's no airports around there. There's nothing around. And plus, I don't think the airplane, I've never had trigger a camera ever. I was saying, there's no way. So that seems odd. And I mean, there's really no trails you can get to where this camera was. You know, it was going with my GPS and. Plus, do you think a um, person was climbing a tree and flashing a light? You would you would have the person being climbed, filmed climbing the tree before it's already up top. Yeah. Well, so I, I, again, this isn't Bigfoot related, I don't think. Right. But what's even stranger than that is that same night at like I can't remember exactly four thirty or five, a couple hours later, you know, four thirty or five in the morning, still dark. Uh, it gets triggered again. And it's triggered by something like high rate of speed. It's uh, coming straight towards the camera. It looks small, like, I don't know, four or six inches long or something, like a, a rod or something. Like it's, it's seen pictures of rod or yep, maybe rod. it's just a camera blurring something. But whatever it was, it moved really fast. And it's on video, too. So I get the whole video thing. It comes straight from the camera, makes a 90-degree turn, and then another 90-degree turn away from the camera and zooms off up in the trees. And it was the strangest thing, I guess. Is it possible that something small, a small particle or something, the wind took it like this and moved it like that? Or something? Well, again, it was... Your camera is meant to to pick animals, not not bugs, really, you know? Uh, Well, it wasn't a bug, for sure, because it's the middle of wintertime, so it was really cold. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There was snow on the ground, and I think that, it, like I said, the camera shows the temperature also. I think it was close right. to zero, below zero or something. I, I don't recall right now. It's half It's been a couple of years. But that's, that's one of the interesting things I did catch on camera. Like I said, I don't know how to explain this. I'm not saying it's – I don't know what it is. But and that's just, yeah. several, there's several other weird things. Good to look at the back of the, you know, the log book of uh, things that – you know, maybe you'll catch the notes one day and you can refer back to it and say, hey, it's very similar. Yeah, it's inter- interesting stuff, you know. I don't know. I'm not a big UFO guy or anything like that. I I'm, I hold the belief that uh, if there is a real Bigfoot out there, it's likely a flesh and blood animal or some sort of primate, something probably between human and an ape. Uh, I don't know, probably closer to eight because of lack of tool use, lack of use of fire, uh, things like that. It doesn't seem to have any artistic ability like even Neanderthal had. They don't create anything they leave behind. So I would imagine to be something closer to an eight, but an intelligent eight. I mean, even... I mean, animals are very intelligent, especially in the wild. Even a deer. Uh, as a hunter, I can speak, you know, as you know, to the intelligence of even, even a deer. You know, you see deer all the time, but mostly what you're seeing is young ones. And uh, when you're hunting like big bucks and stuff, to get a three or a four or five year old deer is a really, really challenging, tough thing to do. To even get them out in the open to be able to see one that's you know four or five years old is really tough. By the time they get three years old, they, you know, are very in tune with the wilderness and nature, and uh, they're able to stay well away from you, and a lot of times become completely nocturnal. So if you think about a Sasquatch, you know, the typical primates out there, I think. I would imagine a Sasquatch to live between 35 and 55 years old based on the lifespan of other primates, you know, and uh, that would be my guess. Uh, If that's true, and if they learn as quick as a deer does, you know, after the first few years, to be pretty in tune with nature and be able to still stay well away from humans. So I guess it's entirely possible they just 
are that smart. And if it's looking 35 to 55 years, it'd be extremely intelligent and, and very in tune with its, you know, environment. So it's not, if they do exist, it's not surprising to me that they would be able to stay away from us, you know, and probably very easily stay away from us. So I do believe it's, I think in my mind, I believe there's a 90% chance there's something out there, maybe 95%. And, uh, I think that it's possible to get evidence. If there is something, there should be eventually some evidence that does come up. So it looks like we lost Blake. <laughs> well, there is a lot of woo people out there, a lot of people that probably don't like what I believe is happening. I think there's probably a lot less of them in my mind than what many people believe. Uh, 15, 19,000 black bear in Michigan. Uh, Dr. Grover Krantz made a comment one time. Uh, that there would probably be, he estimated there's 100 black bear to every, every Sasquatch. Um, I think that would probably be realistic in my mind. You know, like 2 to 10, 15, 20,000 maybe at the tops in North America. But I think otherwise there'd be a lot more evidence showing up. There'd be a lot more scat, a lot more prints found, a lot more cast taken, a lot more sightings. You know, you think there are lots and lots of sightings, but really there, most of them aren't sightings. Most of them are encounters. And when you start narrowing stuff down, you know, there's possibility that it could be something else. Uh, So I don't know. I've just been talking. I don't even know if this is going anymore. Uh, see no lost Blake. So I guess I'm going to sign off here. You guys have a good night. Uh, take care. All right. Uh I have some technical difficulties, as you can see. Um, I guess Ernest is not back yet. I can't hear him. Hmm. You there? Ernest? Well, hmm. we were having some technical difficulties when we first were setting up. That's why we're so late. Unfortunately, uh, it seems StreamYard is acting up again right now. So, uh, he doesn't come back on here in about a few minutes off, shut it down and stuff. Uh, you can always have him back on again. Um, it's, always, it's, it's always a pain in uh, StreamYard or technical issues rise, but, you know, this app is um, being used a lot by a lot of people, and it's constantly being worked on. Um, they're upgrading it. You know, they just added uh, green screens to it, right? So uh, they're constantly upgrading it. Um, Right now, you can only host. You have a phone app, you can host through your phone. Because, you know, that just expands the platform. And I think that they um, are constantly just upgrading and working on it. So thank you for everyone for bearing with me. Um, Ernest is a great guy. He's, he's, he's done a lot of research, read a lot of books, actually has a very extensive library on um, the subject. So... Very knowledgeable guy. Um, so, um, unfortunately, things happen. We work with it. 
We're going to try to get him back on. Apparently, I was the only, only one kicked off. It might have been on my end. I'm not sure. Um, we're going to jump back on and give you another, guys, another good 10, 15 minutes. Um, give him a last little summary of what he wants to talk about and, uh, you know, his future plans. So hopefully we can get back on. If not, well, we'll we'll be other times. So, so uh, you know, we uh, I try to make this show really good for everyone, and I'm no professional by any means, and this is not a full foolproof platform. So, fortunately, things happen, and uh, we've worked through it through the past shows, pretty good success. So, it's all we can do and hope for. Um, I think you know his sightings are um, pretty good, and, and um, I like how he's very um, skeptical about his uh, sightings. You know, he's not sure exactly, you know, if it was a Sasquatch or not. But I, I think my opinion is that it's I would confidently say it's definitely Swatchy because of you know the activity. Most people aren't, you know, you know the one up north. Most people aren't uh, crossing a road. In front of a car, screaming at them, wait, you know, waiting for the car. And if you're hoaxing, you're taking your life in your hands. Uh, there are people who will shoot you. Uh, I don't know if it's still active, but there used to be the uh, million dollar reward if you had a body of Bigfoot or whatever. You know, I'm sure there's still people who are uh, money hungry would do that. So I don't think that a normal person would do that. All right, looks like we got him back. Okay, we're back up, huh? Right. Can you hear me all right? Yep, I can hear you. All right. Uh, I don't know what happened. I, it's probably on my end. But, uh, glad to have uh, everything working again. So, uh, would you leave off? I was just telling them about... Uh, what I thought about your side, basically, and how they were squatchy. And so what, what, what were you saying? And, or any last summary? Kind of? Well, I started to talk about how I think there's probably less than what the population is probably a little less than what uh, a lot of people believe. I just think there would be more evidence showing up. Uh, I know there's a lot of claimed encounters, but I think... Right. Yeah. You know, when people hear something, I don't really see that as that's not a sighting. It's not, it could be something else. I just, I think there's probably a lot less. Uh, I think I spoke with Doc, Dr. Grover Kranz mentioned one time uh, about the population, thinking there was probably one SAS watched every day or out there. And I think that's probably right. really about right. You know, one, one animal can make a lot of tracks. Especially in the snow, if they. Very uh, there. I, I I'm going to disagree with you on this one. I think there's <laughs> a lot more, a lot more out there than what people think. I'm on the I, there's a lot of encounters, <laughs> claimed encounters, but I think that I, certainly some of that's misidentification. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think even so, now with the, yeah, in a lot of especially if you're from the city, you don't hunt to me. You know, everything out there is going to be put to you. Know. Um, I mean, just me, myself, I have 20 cameras going. I spend right, you know, a lot of time hunting, you know, also fishing. I fish, and I, I'm a big backpacker, so I, I travel around. And when I, I kind of combine these hobbies with the squatch thing. I try to go into areas and backpack right. and to really remote areas and take you know, natural wildlife photos and things like that and maybe fish a little. And, uh, man, I'm always looking for a sign of anything like that. And I, I think that being obsessive about this subject for nearly 30 years now, uh, I think would have found myself more evidence than conclusive evidence. I just think that right. what a lot of people 
interpret as being evidence a lot of times is misinterpretation because of lack of experience in, in, the, in, the, in the woods, you know, there's not a lot of real experience out there. There's a lot of people well, I, I in the woods. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, I agree with that. Again, there's some really good, credible, seemingly credible sighting, real good sighting and real good, you know, real yeah. good accounts. But again, we're still, I think, lacking much physical evidence that's really good evidence. Yeah. Um, exactly. You know, there's the physical evidence, video evidence, everything for the last uh, 50 years since Patty has really stayed the same. It's kind of uh, been stagnant across the board. Uh, everyone watched some really good track, a really good video or picture, but uh, nothing, nothing like Patty, really. And um, even Patty, you know, even Patty. Honestly, it can't be proven one way or the other. It can't be proven fake, and it can't be proven real. So we're left right. in limbo. Uh, it's not definitive evidence. I, I think it's a little bit towards the. It's more like it's real because of it's never been proven hoax. It's never been ever a Photoshop. It's, I, I think. We've, we've gone through generations of technology, and it still stands. Up. I think that that's a big point in the direction of side, in my opinion. I, I think there's some really good arguments on both sides of the Patty film. You know, the skeptics and the believers. I believe that there's both sides. Yeah. Have some really I, I definitely good see it. Yeah. Arguments. So, and I, I just don't think there's enough, and either side has enough evidence or a good enough argument to convince me either way. So I am still on the fence with that, I guess. You know, and it hasn't been disproven, so I, I guess I would like to think it is real, but I'm not wasting my time out there. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Different but again, is okay. I don't see this waste of time, so. Right. I um, real quick, because I, I was going to say about the population uh, here in Michigan. My opinion is there's a lot more uh, because I, I've had more encounters with of Sasquatch things, well dollar Sasquatch than a black bear. I've never come across a black bear, never come or anything like that. And I've had some pretty good close call experiences with that was a Sasquatch. Uh, pretty sure there's nothing else out there that was doing things that it did to me. Uh, so that, and being in different areas of the state, having things happen, I think there's more out there than the black bear population here in Michigan, in my opinion. Well, again. You know, it's just my opinion. I don't know. No one knows, really. I mean, you're right. Nobody really knows. And again, they could be extremely intelligent creatures. And if they obviously, they must be out there. You know, us, mankind, would any kind of conclusive proof they, of this. They they um, yeah, just, uh, I think they're actually smart. Um, what's your future plans for 2020? What's the things you want to talk about? Or what's your goals? What's your goals? Well, I'd like to uh, this summer certainly be busy. Uh, probably going to go to West Bend. Uh, time here in Michigan for sure. Like a, a lot going on here in Michigan this summer. So. Uh, with yep. you and other people and a lot of other things. So this, I just hope, yep. you know, and, and evidence, I don't even care who it is at this point. I just want somebody to come up with some <laughs> sort of conclusive evidence somewhere. I don't care where it's at, just uh, indicate I, me, please, somebody. I, I hope I, it's me. But uh, I, I think it's going to be, I hope it's us in Michigan. You know, uh, a lot of Michigan researchers are collaborating this summer. To get, to get some evidence, to get some good stuff. You know? uh, yeah, I, we all uh, we've all had our own. Experience. They're all very determined. A fire underneath us that you know we want to go after it hardcore. Yeah, you know what I think. If there is something out there, and um, we're finally getting to the point where technology may make the difference. You know, we have uh, yeah. you know infrared now and. Uh, uh, night vision, you know, we're using all that here, you know, so 
normal and live trail edge. The trail cams okay. are so much better and clear and everything else and the video and so hopefully something comes about. You know, I really I really hope it does. And hopefully we can do it here in Michigan. Like to see it happen. I, I would like to see it happen here in Michigan. Uh, it's a great state. We have them here. We got some just big gnarly swamps here. Uh, yeah, lower Michigan is full of habitat. You know, most people don't think that the Sasquatch are here because it's a lot of farmland, but uh, a lot of country land. But most people live on the edge of the roads, so you have a big square of houses are on the roads. The whole interior is nothing but uh, woods and swamp, so I think it's a good habitat for them too. As long as they get past houses, they can drive. Yeah, there's a lot of wildlife here. I mean, this habitat would certainly support something like that. Uh, it's just, we'll see if somebody can come up with evidence to prove it. You know, there's a lot of great Sorry. stories. There's, there's a lot of great stuff going on here. A lot of seemingly credible witnesses, you know, it's, there's something happening. I hope it's not all psychological. I, there is something real out there. Right? It could be yeah, just, I don't know. I, 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 you know, I got some stuff where something was thrown at me and James and, you know, I, I said, Girl's not doing that. You know, psychologically, we're not imagining that. The camera can imagine that. I think that they're just so intelligent that they just they choose to do what they want to do, and it's just hard. It's, it's so, it happens so fast. You're not prepared. The camera's not on. It's facing the right direction. It literally takes five seconds. And it's over. But uh, hopefully, with uh, a lot of with with like what we're doing, you know, a lot of technology and everyone having a camera and stuff. Hopefully, we can get a uh, you know, picture or shot, or some good audio or some evidence. Yes, and, uh, we are. Uh, I mean, just our friends. I mean, we have access to or have it all, really. I mean, all the latest technology out there. We're employing it in the field. Uh, if they're is something there? Hopefully, we can find even that. Even FLIR, though, that's still not going to be conclusive proof. That might convince yourself that something. I there. think um, I think certain things. If you get things in video, will it can help. If you have that uh, rips down a tree, uh, you that's going to be pretty viable. Um, you have a subject, uh, maybe running through the so you could. You know, technology now you can be able to clock it and see how fast it's going. It's a lot, it's a lot easier to determine these things compared to like remember the mobile video running. You know, that's back in the nineties, late nineties. Uh, if you in four A, the amount of uh, information you have is is over you know, twice as much as like uh, an ADP. So that more information is packed into those pixels and, and uh I think the days of um, being behind trees and all that's going to go away because the information could be, um, um, you can zoom in and just, you can pick it out a lot more. So I don't think we're going to be able to hide from all these new cameras. And, well, exactly. Either we're going to find know, out one or the other. I mean, eventually, maybe we'll have, yeah. have, you know, the thermal infrared from satellite that can watch every little mouse bouncing around the forest right. floor. And uh, you know, if you can ask for storm boulders or there's certain things I think a video can prove. You know, if you get a good patty shot, you should, you should be able to determine if it's a viable animal. Well, eventually, either eventually technology is going to prove this mystery real or not, or the other. It's going. To... That's basically the only thing. Uh, you know. Having that body is going to prove it. Most people agree with that. Um, but, uh, you know, I think uh, that'd be obviously hard to do. And maybe would have a lot of cars to do it way. Well, we might not be all that far from actually having personal drones go up, you know, several thousand feet right. to watch a whole forest and 
digitally zoom into each spot and know every single animal that's in that forest, yeah. you know? So for I finish in the out zoom. I guess I think they can twenty the hide in. I mean twenty years ago yeah. we didn't dream we'd have the technology we have today. So I, I imagine another twenty no, years of technology man. that we're not even imagining now right now. So maybe the answer well, would yeah, yeah. sooner than later. I think so too. I really do. I think there's a good resource from around the country and around the world that are, are crisp, I think, about getting this good evidence. Because a lot of people seem to have interaction, um, have patient on them, but just interaction, they, or they have areas where they have things going on that are sightings are around. So I think if people out put the work in, they're going to get more closer to finding out the truth. Yeah, every year I think we're getting close to the truth, whatever it may be. We'll see. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping for one thing, you know, but who knows? Maybe there was something out there. Maybe it no longer exists. Maybe we'll eventually figure that out. Maybe, well, yeah, or maybe it's, it's just yeah. not nearly extinct species, and maybe it'd be extinct before I, we're ever able to prove it. Yeah, I don't that'd be very sad. Um, I really don't know at this point. I don't know what to think. There's, you know, it seems like there should be more evidence showing up. That makes leads me to believe that there, if there is something real, it's extremely rare. Uh, just because of lack of evidence, lack of good evidence. Even no, sightings. It is, it's an issue. With as many as there are, there's really not that many, you know. I, I don't even see a huge population with the number of sightings we have, you know, really. But again, there's a bunch that probably don't want to explore, but things like that. It's, it's, it's hard to say, you know, there's a lot of circumstances that have to happen for sighting or for interaction to happen. Uh, you know, for a lot of people, like, oh, uh, I got an area I go in, I think it's has to know me, but they don't, they don't do stuff to me every single time I go in there. It's, it's rare, you know. I think it's if want to, whatever they're doing, and a lot of luck. Um, so you know, people are going to have good, good opportunities to get out there to uh, watch on, on video. I, I love video. Video evidence is a lot, is especially the high depth stuff. A lot of information out. So. Well, more uh, and more. Hopefully this year. I mean, somebody comes up with something. <laughs> It's 2020. We got to do it this year. I mean, it's good. 2020. It's a good, good, good day to do it, I think, you know. Uh, There's yeah. a lot more people out looking at this point. There's a lot more believers now yeah. than there has yeah. been. There are a lot of people claiming to be knowers. So and everyone can go out with their cell phone. So everyone has a camera, basically. A, a, a decent camera now. You know? Most cell phones are cameras. A lot better than badgers. Yeah, we're carrying around everybody. You got millions of people carrying around better cameras than Patterson had. Yeah. So again, again, going back to Patterson, it's, there's good arguments on both sides of that that story. But it's still a, a part of Bigfoot history. It's still entrenched. It's always going to be there because you know he was kind of the first one. You know, real or not, it's that's always going to be part of Bigfoot history, and it's interesting. It's it's a cool subject. It's it's a fascinating yeah. subject. It's fascinating to wonder and dream of what it might be. And, you know, a lot of people out there have a lot of different ideas what they think it could be. You know, I, I believe it's flesh and blood, just another animal that, you know, shoot it, it dies, you know. And other people, yeah. some people believe it jumping through portals, interdimension traveling, space travelers, piloting UFOs, uh, mind speaking, uh, there's a lot of a lot of theories out there, you know. Nobody knows. I mean, we still haven't been able to prove it even exists yet, you know. Let alone its capabilities. Yeah, it's, uh, it leaps and bounds between just proving it, getting on video, and then every single thing that people are witnessing or experiencing, as they say. Well, yeah. is it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I, nobody knows the truth, you know. But uh, I, I tend to stay down to earth, you know, on my thoughts. Um, 
Mm-hmm. Not only can we not prove it exists, and we certainly can't prove it's got any superpowers and super abilities and and can do things that no other animals can't. So I tend to lean towards if it is real, it's it's an animal. You know, I don't see any I haven't seen any evidence to believe otherwise, other than people just trying to kind of have a reason or come up with a reason to uh have a reason why we can't find it. You know, it must be something think, uh, a t- simplest explanation of, of the thing they're talking is they just come out and hide. They move out of the area. My thoughts is if they're real, it's it's just a very intelligent animal. That's it. It's yeah. just able to avoid yeah. us because it's much more tuned with their environment than we are. Their observation skills are on a whole other level. Probably another planet. Uh, in terms of skill level, uh, I think that's all it is. Their observation of everything. And, uh, it makes and, sense all the time. Well, we'll see. Maybe 2020 will do it. Hopefully. I hope so. We'll see it this year. I'm waiting. Yeah, well, I've been waiting for a long time now. I still have hopes, so. We're, we're going to try. Uh, we got a few chances this summer and uh, you know all year. So, um, Thanks for coming on. Is there anything else? Uh, do you want to plug anything? I don't think you uh, run any Facebook groups. Do you want to recommend any Facebook groups or uh, recommend any YouTube channel? No, there's, any there. a of, there's a lot of good ones, a lot of bad ones. Uh, I kind of keep quiet with my life. I stay out of the light, limelight the best I can. I just do my thing and hoping to come up with something to convince myself that they're real someday and or maybe be the one that finds solid evidence that it it's out there. Um, mm-hmm. We'll see. But otherwise, I'm just going to keep going in the woods and enjoying myself. Just what's been thing is. It hasn't been a waste of time because yeah. it's been a wonderful time. That's right. I, I agree. Wonderful people, and you. Uh, it's very interesting, you know. So. Oh, yeah. yeah, some interesting oh. people. For sure. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, thank you for coming on, Ernst. I really appreciate it. Uh, can't, can't to work with you uh, this uh, summer, and um, hopefully we get some good stuff. Um, uh, thank you so much. And uh, anything else you can say before we get off? I can't think of anything. You enjoy your night. You take care. I'll talk to you yeah, anytime soon. All right. Sounds good. Thank you for everyone for watching the content. Uh, it's been really fun. I got some more videos coming out soon, so uh, stay tuned. See you soon for another live show. All right, guys. Take it easy. Have a good night.